it's funny that you mentioned Frankie Lane because I the last podcast I did with Don Morocco, he mentioned the story about Mighty Zulu. Was it Ronnie Pope? Who ended up yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember the story. I remember the story. He hit him in the head. Yeah. I almost killed him. I almost killed him. Yeah, I, I had absolutely no idea about that story. I mean, I, I don't suppose you ever met Ronnie Pope, did you, at any point? Ronnie Pope, that's Zulu, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, Mighty yeah, Zulu, he's, yeah. He, he's a moron. He's just a big muscle guy, but he wasn't really, like, he cut, he was just kind of smooth looking, and he was just on steroids, but he was a he was a goof. I don't know what Frankie had said to him, but I think he said something. It was, I think, racially charged or something. But he slipped up behind him with an iron pipe, and he didn't see him coming, and he'd been in the back of the head. And he almost killed him. He almost did. And by the time I had met Frankie, you could tell he was, he still had, he showed effects of that attack because he would stutter and he would, he, he would do this a lot and blink his eyes. So he was never right after the attack by Zulu. Yeah, I know. I'd, I'd never, I'd never heard that story until the last time I spoke to Don, and that was a pretty shocking one. I'll tell you what. This sort of like leads into the next question. Then is the most memorable backstage fight that you saw? Well, I've I've seen a few. I've been in a few myself. Probably the most memorable was uh, was Steve Kern and Coco Ware. <laughs> Everyone says that one as well. <laughs> yeah, because what happened in Memphis was uh, the fabulous ones, they played music, and all of a sudden, and they like would play, they would dance to the ring a little bit, and then Coco came in, and he was doing the same thing, and they wanted to call it out on him. Like, it was his idea. It wasn't his idea. It was Jerry Jarrett's idea. And... and they came to Nashville one night and they weren't booked there. They were booked somewhere else at a, what we call a spot show, but they didn't go there. They came to Nashville with the express intent of uh, confronting Coco. And they came in there and I saw them come in. I said, what are you guys here? You're not booked. Well, you know, and they didn't, I asked Stan, Stan didn't say anything. So I'm sitting in the dressing room and I heard, I saw Steve and Coco over there in the corner. The dressing room's not too big. It's about a 20 by 20 room, maybe, maybe 18, you know, not that big, had a shower in and everything. But they're sitting over there next to the shower and they're talking, and all of a sudden it just broke out. They just started fighting. And I said, hey, guys, stop, stop, because business was really, really good. I didn't want any one of them to get hurt because they were both like main players. And finally, uh, somebody told me, step back, Dutch. I said, hey, I'm done with it. I stepped back because it, it was none of my business, but I don't like to see that because. You know, if one of them gets hurt and you got to change your plans, it could, it could affect all of us. But Steve had the upper hand for a minute, and then Coco just started un unloading those haymakers on him. And he never really knocked Steve down and didn't knock him out or anything. But finally, Steve said, screw it. He, he quit, and he, he left. Do you remember? It's funny because Ricky Morton told me that story, I think, as well. And, and yeah, the, Ricky uh, Morton was the one who told me to get back. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, well, I suppose it. I suppose it created a story for both of you to share on my YouTube podcast thirty yeah. years later, at least. But uh, are there any are there any others that sort of uh, stick out in your mind? The fights, hmm? junkyard dog. No, wasn't it? Was it? No, wasn't junkyard dog? Butch Reed. And remember the berserker? Yeah, John Nord. Yeah, they got in a fight in mid south. I don't know what it was about. But they were like nitpicking back and forth. And, you know, Bill Watts was afraid to put them in the ring together. So he just called them together. Bill Watts said, hey, if you're going to fight, fight down here so we don't kill our own business in the ring. And they started fighting. And not, nobody won. And then from that point on, they got along. I mean, Bill Watts took them in the back and said, hey, throw it down here and let it go. Or are you both fired? So they fired back and forth and got it out of their system, and then they they went about their business. Yeah, I've heard the worst thing is to actually break up a fight, because then there's still tension going on. You might as well just let them fight, and then it's over. Well, you could get hurt trying to help them. See what I mean? Yeah, 